we're looking at uh, children with hemiplegic CP, um, cerebral palsy, um, where their upper limb is affected, um, along with a number of different uh, symptoms. So we wanted to see, um, A, what their brain networks look like with this type of injury, um, and which subjects responded best to a constraint therapy. Um, and this constraint therapy basically was uh, isolating the uh, weak arm and um, forcing them to continually practice and improve. We began looking at their resting state networks uh, at baseline uh, and then identifying which subjects improve the most clinically. So it was a, a little surprising and uh, keeping in mind that this is a very small group of subjects, um, but the subjects that had the most compromised networks actually tended to improve the most. So right now we don't really have a good tool to decide whether these kids are going to respond well or not to constraint therapy. Those who do, do very well, um, and those who don't just have an extremely frustrating experience. So we need some kind of biomarker that might tell us uh, who might be a good candidate for constraint therapy and, and who might be better off doing something else. So imaging is one of those types of biomarkers that we think might be very useful. It's a very simple, very benign type of experiment to actually do to both understand how things do change and ultimately to 